take one Arctic wilderness, insert eight young adventurers, and freeze at minus 40 degrees for three weeks. It's a recipe for tension, trauma and triumph. Each night the team get the chance to record a personal video diary, giving us the chance to find out what's really going down in the Arctic. The eight young adventurers are deep in training in the Canadian High Arctic. They're here to work on a major global warming project, vital research to help polar bears. But first they've been acclimatising to this extreme environment and with temperatures as low as minus 50, it's not proving easy. Out here, everything's an effort, Nothing, nothing's easy. It's so tough. Like, in the mornings it's so tough having to get out your sleeping bag when you're freezing cold. Mm, so cold. It was absolutely freezing last night. It was horrible. I, I woke up in the middle of the night in my sleeping bag and I sat up and I just wanted to get out. I felt so claustrophobic and all my face was like wet from all the snow which had dripped down and I was in the sleeping bag with about 10 different things piled in the bag with me, about all my shoes and everything. And I woke up and I just, want, I just wanted to, I didn't even want to be in that. I'm missing the everyday life, like just being able to go downstairs, go in your fridge and get a drink, instead of having to wait hours to melt snow to get a bit of water. So yeah, it's tough. Nothing's easy in here. It's like you have to remember before you go to bed, you have to put the right, you have to put all your kit and your water bottles in your boots, put them in your sleeping bag. If you don't, if you leave your gloves outside your sleeping bag, they'll freeze. I didn't expect it to be this hard, really. And I'm actually beginning to get a bit homesick. I don't think people at home understand how hard it is. Like, when they watch this, they'll be like, oh, I could do that. I don't know what they're moaning at, but it's so difficult and your emotions should just up and down all the time. On day five of training, the group were given an extreme navigation test. They found it hard work pulling their supplies behind them in pairs, and some of the group didn't think Fabian was pulling his weight, let alone his sled. I think Fab has been getting on a lot of people's nerves today. He's just lazy. He finds any excuse to not do something. Mm, apparently I was lazy, but I didn't feel like I was lazy. He's annoying everyone. I felt a bit kind of victimised. No! One sec, yeah? Sorry. Others thought he wasn't being a very good team player. When we were all reading the map to find where we needed to go today... So I reckon over there is our first point. He kept either taking everyone else's ideas and just using them and pretending that he thought of it himself. I think we'll here. I've said that about five minutes ago. Yeah, I know. He just repeated them. said that about five minutes ago. Yeah, I know. He just kept saying, no, oh, we should do this, no, I think we should do this, and then walking off on his own, thinking of his own ideas instead of working within the group. People were thinking a bit too much of me, because when I was 12, people thought of leaving me alone, but now I'm 13. It's only been like two days since I was 13. People think, oh, he's 13. He has to do loads and loads and loads of stuff. The thing is, I'm still the same person, but I know 13, when you're 13, you have to take on a lot more responsibility than everything. Every night, the team spend three hours melting it's snow to cook their dehydrated food. It's going to take hours. The menu hasn't been very varied. I'm just so hungry and I can't stop thinking of anything about food. <sighs> so, so fancy. A chicken sandwich, mayonnaise. I'm so, so hungry. Food is pretty gross. Everything you have to add water to when it comes from a packet. Never ever will go home, ever, ever, ever go to eat anything from a packet ever again. That evening, the leaders had a special local delicacy for the team. We've got something slightly different for you tonight. No, oh, no, look at yes, this. Yes. <laughs> yes. What is key about the diet of the traditional people here is that it's got to be A, rich in protein, and B, is generally very fatty. Here we have a caribou steak, which is very, very rich, yeah, but frozen solid. 
Who's up for having a taster? Me! Me. No. Frozen? Yeah. Frozen. Yeah. yeah, no, as it is. And that's what? That, is how, step for me. that is how the Inuits eat their food. They leave it buried in the ice yeah. for up to a year and then they'll come yeah. back to it and then eat it and it's known as a local delicacy. Yeah, I, I will not eat it. I'll eat it, but it's just gonna be. Oh. Lewis, it's like chewing on ice. It's nasty, man. It's like <laughs> Both the fish and meat were totally raw. <laughs> Stay alive, oh. yeah, come on. Ah, it's just like chewing on ice, actually. Uh, that is rough. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't I don't know. I I don't know. 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 I don't that's nice. Come on, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's nice. Can we eat a lot of... I'm not having any more of that, Matt. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That is disgusting. No, please. No, 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 the leaders also had another, rather more welcome surprise for one of the team, to go and help scientists with a survey of rare whales. So, Matt... Really? You're going. Oh, man. <laughs> Matt's been told that he's got a special treat tomorrow. He's going to go up in a plane. He's going to be helping with conservation and counting these whales, which I am really jealous of because I'd love to do that, but I'm really happy for him because he does really seem to appreciate it. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. Well done. Well done, Matt. He's really excited about it. You can, you can tell he's... You, you can just, when you get to know people, we all express it differently and you can tell in Matt's eyes that he was excited. Uh, I knew he was excited. I can't wait. We get to end up playing and fly really low and we have to count the, how many whales we see and oh, it's just going to be such a fun time. I can't wait. I'm so happy to be picked. Obviously, we would all we all would love to go. You know, it's it's a bit silly saying, "Oh no, it's fine." I didn't want to go because we all did. We all secretly did. But I mean, they couldn't have really picked a better person because he's been helping out so much this week. Matt was searching for highly endangered bowhead whales, and he got really lucky. There's one. It's down there. Oh, this is amazing. On the coldest day of the trip so far, the team faced the Arctic task of building traditional igloos. With wind chill taking the temperature below minus 40, it was to prove extremely challenging. We've spent basically a night out on the snow in a tent. We're now going to do it the true traditional way tonight and we're going to stay out in an igloo. But you guys are going to be building your own igloos. Putting up the igloos was tough. At the beginning everyone thought it would be not really that hard and wouldn't take very long. But we had to cut a lot of ice blocks out. Mine's a bit broke. It's not as easy as it looks. It's not like in Britain when you make bricks, you just get some cement, you just stick it in there. It takes ages and then they break. And then you've been so careful and you've tried so hard to make this one brick. You've taken about, I don't know, one brick I took at least 25 minutes to, to cut out. That's how long it takes to make a brick, OK? I'm not exaggerating, I swear. The teamwork started off good at the beginning of the day and then kind of got worse and worse and worse. It's not touching enough. What, what is that? Look, it's just coming in the It's not, it's the corner. That is the corner. Shh, shh, Come, calm down. Let's try and just reshape it. We spent so long slaving away, trying our best with it. Basically, our utmost best 
Okay, my back is killing me. It's so cold and it's windy and my face is so dry and my lips are all chapped and oh. We took ages and ages. We took about four or five ish hours, I think. Oh, I can't remember the time. Uh, I don't know, I think my, fra my brain is frozen. That's why I can't remember anything. I'm not actually doing much good out here because um, I don't think I'm helping because I'm quite cold. As the day progressed, a lot of people started thinking, oh, I can't really be bothered. And then um, in the end, there was only a few of us left doing the igloo. And then we kind of got a bit angry with each other. It seems like it's us four, you know. Where's the hell else? Oh, where's Jen, Adam, Fabian? Adam and Fabian got most flack for slacking off. I told them I need some help. But do you? Mm. Oh, really? Oh, really? I, didn't I, had I, I thought you could you build, build an igloo on your own. Been shot a lot a few times for being lazy. Adam, what are you doing? Just stand around watching it. It's not going to fall off on its own. We went out and tried to help, but we couldn't because there was no job to do. And, and then once there was no job to do, me and Adam just stood yeah. around. Yeah, that one's perfect. Because we stood around, people got angry with us because we weren't doing anything, but we had no jobs to do. I think basically because we told him, oh, please, Fabian, because he was really doing nothing, sitting in his tent most of the time, really wasn't helping. We, we kind of kind of went, come on, you know, this is really hard, you're not helping at all. Um, Adam's been quite lazy today. He, he even said he was. He said, oh, I'm so lazy, me. I don't care, but he was at me saying I'm lazy because I know I am lazy, I admit to it. But Fabian was getting pretty upset. He felt the group weren't being fair to him and shared his troubles with Emily. It's just the way that I'm being treated. I'm not being listened to. I'm not having my views heard. I'm trying and then I just get put down. Fabian's been really upset, but he gets upset really easily. That hasn't been a great day at all, but I think, I think everyone, I think I've just had a hard day because I'm missing her. Leader Emma decided to give him a bit of a pep talk. You have been working hard. I've seen you. So they say to you, oh, you haven't been working hard enough. You turn around and you say, no, actually, I've been working really, really hard. And so you need to make sure they know that. Eventually, the winds became so bad that it was too cold to keep going safely and work had to be completely abandoned. A bit angry actually that we didn't get to finish off our igloo because we did all this work for really nothing. It just feels like we've all worked our butts off for nothing. Morale plunged to an all-time low. Today has been a real bad day, I think, because in this last half hour we've all been on such a low. Oh, oh, no. oh, stupid. And it's just getting me down. The fact that we just had with the dig and we haven't finished it is getting me down. They've just given up and run away and I'm just hating this so bad, so bad. This is tough, this is really, really tough. I'm just sitting here being freezing cold, talking to you guys at home, sitting in your lovely lounges. I just hope that none of you have to ever come here, because it's cold. Oh, it's, it's really, really getting on my nerves now. But I know I can't give up because I know I feel guilty in the end when when it's all over. It's only two weeks, but I must say time is going so slowly. I feel like I've been here like all my life. I've only been here for like five days. For Alex, it was a particularly emotional day. Now let's go over live to Alex in the Arctic. Are you there, Alex? Hello. Hello. Now, I believe you that had morning it had been her turn to do the daily satellite night. link up to CBBC. Her report went well, oh, but made yeah, her yeah. really homesick. <laughs> Are you all missing home? <laughs> yeah, load. What are you missing? And oh, I really miss roast chicken and crusty bread. Oh. I'm craving for it. Today I've had a bit of a rubbish day because. I just, after I'd done my exchange link, I mean, it went really, really well and everything, but after I'd done that, I just kept thinking of mum and dad. 
No, I really miss them. Do you have any messages for anyone back home? Yes, I do. Um, I'd like to say hi to my mum and my dad and my sister Ruth. Say happy, happy Easter and happy birthday to my brother. His is on the 16th. That's Fraser. When they said, oh, yeah, they're all sat around watching you on telly, I just thought about how much I wanted to be at home and how much I really miss them. And I find it so difficult and people think people at home are going to watch this and think that, oh, they're really, really ungrateful and everything. It's so difficult. You don't understand. I find it really, really difficult and everybody else has been great and... And that has been an all right day. I'm just really, really fed up. To cheer the team up, the leaders arranged for a very special delivery. We have supper for you, right? Oh, yes. What do we have? You're right, guys. Pizza. Oh, we had pizza. Oh. Mm. Still taste it. It wasn't even great pizza, it just tasted like heaven. Oh, okay. Best holiday was definitely food. You have no idea how good pizza and chips taste like. In the freezing cold. <laughs> oh, that was the best pizza. I don't think I'll ever, ever appreciate that as much as I did that. <laughs> Spirits were also lifted by some very unusual local entertainment, throat singing. We just had such a lovely treat. We went into one of the igloos and there were two Inuit ladies there and they, and they sang us some of their um, traditional songs. It's called throat singing and they sang all their songs from the throat, which was absolutely lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't like normal singing, it isn't like opera or obviously not pop star singing, it's in the Canadian Arctic. But they imitate the sounds around them, like the natural sounds, and they were so excellent. I'm telling you, I would definitely buy a CD, it's so good. It is like, it's different, it's something different to hear. And they are really, really good. Their throats, how they do it all. You can't even tell which one's singing because it's two of them and they sang together and you can't tell which person's doing the high bit or the low bit. You sit there and you're, like, you're just amazed. You're stunned. You can't say anything because it's just so good. You know, it, good isn't good enough. Excellent. It was perfect. They were just so good at it. The team had managed to finish two smaller igloos, so there was room for some to sleep in them. It was a tough decision. All the girls are debating whether we want to sleep in one of the made igloos tonight or in a tent. Um, Jenny, Lynn and Courtney, I think, want to sleep in an igloo. I'm going to sleep in an igloo tonight. I'm going to try it out because I know I'm going to so regret it if I didn't, what, didn't do it. And it isn't like I force myself to do it. I, what a brilliant place to sleep. Me and Alex really don't because we're just too cold. So we're going to stay in the tent. And we'll actually be more warm with the igloo. Did I say the igloo? The igloo. Then we would in the tent anyway. By night time, the boys began to accept that Fabian had been getting a lot of stick. I think it's a bit sly on Fabian, because they're all saying, Fabian, you're lazy, blah, blah, blah. When I pull my weight, yeah, no one says anything. <laughs> and then I have a break, and then I'm the person who's slacking off. Let Somehow Adam always that. misses I getting shouted at. See, I, I think it's because you're the littlest, yeah, and like, everyone thinks you're really cute. Person ever. Those who chose to stay in the igloo had a very special experience. By morning, even Fabian was happy. Hello, on Fabian TV. Hello. Yesterday, Fabian stepped in an igloo. The igloo was pretty cool. Um, nice and warm. Sleeping in the igloos last night was a lot of fun. It was cold in the sense that uh, it, it's in ice <laughs> and we're sleeping in it, but other than that, it was alright. So much warmer than the tent. You would never have thought that they'd be as warm as that, but they were. And um, I really enjoyed it. How many people can say they've slept in an igloo? But once again, Lewis had a bad experience. Last night was quite tough, actually. In fact, <laughs> I haven't had one good night's sleep. For some reason, something goes wrong every night for me. And last night, 
I realised that my sleeping bag had frozen because the night before I'd sweat, I'd sweated so much here yeah, it just wasted into my sleeping bag, which then froze. So last night I didn't actually have a sleeping bag, so I basically slept in my big parka. Other from that, I had a really good night in the igloo. Actually, I really enjoyed it. I reckon if you could sleep in igloos all every day, it would be quite easy. On their main expedition, they'll have to cope for a fortnight in the wilderness as they head for a remote glacier to check on global warming. And as the week of intense Arctic training drew to a close, the adventurers slowly began to get used to the extreme environment. Supposedly, it's like minus 40, but it doesn't seem as cold as it was the first time it was minus 40, so I must have climatised. I'm trying to keep a positive spirit and not let things get me down because I know that I'm here for three weeks at the end of the day and I can't be moaning about stuff, so I'm just going to get on with it, really. We just have to all keep kind of, like, cheerful and stuff and just cheer each other up when one of us is down, really. On the second day, I really could have packed my bags and gone. I realised now I would have so regretted it because even though it is hard, this is something we're going to be, you know, remembering for like the rest of our lives. Next morning, leader Emma took Lewis and Alex on a flight to check out the route they'll be taking to the glacier. Now we're going to be working down the, towards the Grinnell Glacier. They'll have an epic journey of more than a hundred miles by dog sled. You think they'll take all the dogs then? I reckon they'll be all out on the sea ice, but getting up all this land is going to be tough. Yeah. I didn't realise the route was so long. I f like, it looks like it's going to take us weeks. The views were amazing and we could see all the sea and like all the icebergs and it was just like breathtaking. We have to go over mountains, we have to go over ice, soft snow, everything. What we're flying over now is the glacier. This is the end point of our whole trip. And what we're going to do is come out here and measure how much the ice has changed. It just looks like it goes on forever. It's enormous, it's 15 kilometres long. And boy is it big. I didn't think the sheet of glacier would be as big. The night before departure, there was a mixture of excitement and nerves about the adventure to come. The expedition's tomorrow, so not long now. I'm a bit apprehensive about everything, because tomorrow is the big day. It's going to be really exciting. But I think it's going to be really, really scary as well, so I'm feeling a bit, you know, nervous about that. I am looking forward to tomorrow. A few other people might not be looking forward to it, but I am. It will be tough, yeah, but I don't think it will be as tough as this one has been. It's just the anticipation of going there now, so I can't wait. I reckon it's going to be quite tough. It's going to be really challenging. And um, I don't think anyone is quite prepared for what's up, like, what's up ahead. What's for certain is that it's going to be the hardest journey of their lives. Dog sledding day after day over frozen lakes and mountains, plus ferocious Arctic storms are going to push the team to the absolute limit. <laughs> My legs just went to jelly and I just couldn't, I couldn't go on anymore. The pants I'm currently wearing will be staying on for the rest of the ten days of the expedition. Last night was the scariest night of my life. Man, this place does stuff to you.